Brother Daniel Hogben, thank you for your insightful post. I do hope you and your family are well. You did a fantastic job putting together your presentation behind a pulpit and with the use of a microphone. The flowers were an added touch, which I definitely liked. Your enthusiasm for this topic is almost contagious. And then I have to stop and remind myself that I represent the Episcopalians at this point in time. You mentioned that the apostolic polity is Bible-based, and I wholeheartedly agree with you in this matter. The Anglican Church rests on a three-legged stool, the very first one being Scripture. You claim that the apostolic polity to have originated from the apostles directly. The Episcopalian polity also has claims to apostolic succession. This is the inherent belief that the bishops are the successors to the apostles and that episcopal authority is derived from the apostles. The apostolic succession continues in the office of the bishops who seek to carry on the work of leading, supervising and uniting the church. The apostolic succession may also be understood as a continuity in doctrinal teaching from the time of the apostles to the present. You made mention of baptism and being spirit-filled. Well, let me bring to your attention the Episcopalian doctrine of baptismal regeneration. It is at baptism that an individual is initiated into the community and are born again. Simply put, the Holy Spirit pours upon them the gift of new life. This doctrine has its roots in the New Testament in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, verses 5 to 7. This is a transformation of the individual into the risen life of Christ. We Episcopalians believe that our God is indeed a God of order. And when you mention flexibility, I almost think there will, there will be snakes found at one of your services. Our worship is not made up spontaneously. Traditions have been handed down to us over many centuries. And much thought, prayer and timeless traditions play an integral part in the beautiful words of prayer and ceremonies which I believe have been very helpful in, in aiding a Christian's walk with Christ. As Episcopalians, we do believe in the miraculous which is described in the New Testament as powers and signs. A miracle is an event in time that is perceived by the senses of those who witness it. Miracles reflect the direct activity of God which transcends the usual order of nature for a religious purpose. Jesus' miracles are deed events of the coming kingdom of God. The New Testament has reference to various accounts of Jesus' miracles concerning healing and nature in which his power over nature, demon possession, can be clearly seen. Our Sunday Gospels Use miracle stories from Jesus' ministry to proclaim the saving message of the gospel made present in word and sacrament. The Episcopal model has had the added advantage of providing a form of control over false teaching and false teachers. It also accelerates the decision-making in the church in the sense that the leadership could make a ruling instead of ruling through a committee, which can be seen as a long, drawn-out process. You mentioned unity, and I would like to state that unity does not originate from organizations. It, however, originates from the individuals relating to each other. Jesus was referring to the relational unity and not organizational unity in his high priestly message or his high priestly prayer. And I once again reiterate that the Episcopalian Church welcomes all in the sense that we are God's children and have full and equal claims to God's love, acceptance and pastoral concern. Thank you once again for your efforts in putting together your presentation and I give credit to the episcopalchurch.org's website for the valuable information made readily available there.